Hi everyone, Scrappy Kathy here with uh, more Mixed Media Frenzy. And today it's going to be kind of a frenzied um, approach to uh, a, a product that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I have quite a lot of, today is all about magic powders. Um, and, and I have uh, a fair amount of experience with these uh, Ken Oliver Color Burst powders. I've got a, a pretty good selection of colors that I'm keeping in here. Um, I just noticed that I'm out of ultramarine blue, so that's the one I've used the most. And I'll just kind of give you an idea of some stuff I did just a minute ago, kind of working with um, with these colors, trying to decide what I was going to demo. First of all, um, the, the, the types of, of, uh, of colors are uh, Color Burst, which is, as I said, the one that I'm the most familiar with, uh, Brusho, which um, I bought probably a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago. I, I may have gotten them for my birthday in December of last year and have not even opened them. So I had to open all of these and um, the, the four that I'm, I'm using here. And I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about the, the difference. Uh, and then the, the, my most recent acquisition are the Vicki Booten uh, pigment powders. And they're a little bit different um, in some ways that uh, that make it make it interesting and make me glad that I have some of each. So um, let me kind of first tell you what I did just in in testing. I opened and uh, this and exposed this pink. Uh, Vicky Booten powder first, and I sprinkled it on wet paper. I had used my sprayer to spray the, this is a 140 pound watercolor paper by Canson. Let me see if I can bring the tablet into view here. It's this stuff, uh, readily available at uh, most craft stores, and what I like about it is it's very thick, and for testing things, I like that. If I, if I find that whatever I'm testing doesn't uh, curl paper too much or is easily straightened out, then I'll switch over to the Vicki Booten foundation papers, uh, which are a little bit um, thinner, but they're smoother and nicer for actual um, scrapbooking. Uh, this paper uh, is 11 by 15, so when I cut it square, it's 11 by 11, and so I have to have a, 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 paper, a 12 by 12 frame behind it, and I do that, so that's not unheard of, uh, unheard of nor totally undesirable. Um, so I use this when I sprinkled it onto um, wet, paper, paper that had a little water on it. It did kind of spread out. It didn't explode like uh, the other two products, but it did, and it, it gave me a lighter color. And that's something that might be desirable to me. But from my experimenting, I, I feel, I, I tried kind of blotting this uh, Vicki Booten stencil into the wet and then transferring that onto um, some paper. And I got kind of a, a, a little bit of an impression here. It's not particularly distinguishable as a flower uh, here, but if I had a different kind, like um, a, a geometric print stencil, uh, it, it might really be interesting because you get some dark colors and some light colors and when I pressed it on what I did was I I dipped let me get bring it into view here for you while this was wet I dipped the stencil down and kind of rubbed with my finger and there was some uh, ink on the other side or some color on the other side and then I 
kind of blotted it down and used my finger again to uh, transfer. And so where my finger touched, where I was spreading what was on my finger are the lighter colors in here. The darker colors are what transferred um, via the stencil. So that's an idea. What I think I'm going to do for this demo is I'm going to use it to color some modeling paste and if you can, I'm just gonna use one color, but if you can imagine uh, a stencil like this, you might want some yellow for the center of the flower. You might, well, let me get some white paper behind it so you can see what I'm talking about. You might want some yellow for the middle, you might want some pink for the outside and some green for the leaves, and then maybe some blue for, ba for back in here. And as long as you have a lot of patience with your uh, handy dandy um, uh, palette knife here, you can kind of get it in and around and, and kind of do that. Today, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use um, this pink to color this modeling paste, and then I'm going to transfer it onto, uh, I've got three, since I have three products, I'm gonna do three different demos, and I have three six by six pieces of that watercolor paper. And what I intend to do is whatever I create I'm going to scan and then I can print it at 12 by 12 if I want a layout or I can print it a, a smaller size if I just want it want to use it like patterned paper if you will. So I will when we finish this um, film today I'll have several unfinished projects and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, moving on to the next product. I went then to Color Burst, and I had heard of a technique where you, let me use, show you the one that I used, where you sprinkle the powders onto either wet or dry, bubble wrap, and then either, you know, spray if you sprinkled them on dry or whatever, and then take your paper and kind of lift a print off of it. So I, I lifted, did my paper like this and rubbed it around and pulled it back up. The very first printing was what I got here. It was the paper was wet and the bubble wrap was wet. So I put that aside. It's actually still wet because I just did it about maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. Then the next printing, I had this piece of paper and I left it dry and pressed it down and I got these interesting images. And I was thinking I might fussy cut these or, or use a, a, a circle punch to, to punch them out and use them somehow as embellishments. Uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, but I can't even tell you how much I love the color variations that kind of build up. And the three colors I used were, I used what was left in the ultramarine blue, I used uh, some orchids, some fuchsia, and some Prussian blue. And the Prussian blue is this really dark navy, and it's gorgeous, especially when you're trying to do something uh, that, like a night sky. Now, this little bit right here, uh, I, I kind of did the same thing for this that I had done with the pink powder, where I put some uh, powder on the, dry powder on the paper, sprayed it, spritzed it with water, it left it wet, I pressed a stencil into it, and you can see here the center uh, holes of the stencil. I didn't get a sense that that was a way that I'd try to use it, but I'm, I'm actually, the next thing I'm gonna try with it is actually putting it directly through a stencil. I'll try um, isolating some colors in there, and I have done that before with a very different kind of stencil, but for demonstration purposes, we'll go there. Now, I did a third pressing where I pressed a little bit harder down I actually sprayed a little bit more water onto the um, the bubble wrap and pressed this down and got these interesting kind of uh, oval or, or 
eye-shaped things. And and they just, that just looks so interesting to me. Obviously where this purple was, uh, was kind of um, uh, wetter than where this was. But look at all the colors in, in all of these. It's just fascinating to me, love this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna put those away. And so my project for um, color burst will be to take a few more colors and and do the um, do it through the stencil. So I'm going to kind of put. Well, I'll just leave that there for the moment. Now, brushos. What I did for the with the brushos was just select these four colors, and they are turquoise, scarlet, yellow, and ultramarine. Now, I've, I've seen online a lot of complaints that the uh, there's no shaker. As you can see, you can kind of control this by squeezing it and by shaking it and so forth, and, and it's not a whole lot is gonna come out. Brushos, when you open them, the powder's pretty much just loose. So I actually used, for today's demo, I actually used the tip of my palette knife just to lift some up and kind of tap the powder onto the, the paper. And I, as I said, I think I started with yellow first, and then I added the scarlet, and then some ultramarine, and then turquoise. And I really love this, and this is something that you'll probably see. I will scan this and I'll probably print it at 12 by 12, the kind of the interesting part over here on the square, and, and I'll use that as a, as a background for a layout or something. I just love it. I think I'm not quite sure how it did all of this. It behaves very much like Color Burst, but because it comes out of the the bottle differently, it the the result looks different, and I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do today, since I've already tried just kind of the plain method, I'm going to put it on the bubble wrap. Now I have one more, I think, scrap piece of paper lying around that I could use for something. I just kind of want to show you, let me use the, here, I'll use the back of one of these. No, I won't. I've got these three I want to use. Let me try, let's see if I have any smaller pieces here. Um, I do not. So uh, what I was going to do was a tiny little demo of what we mean when we say magic powders. So let me do the reverse. I'm not going to use these for anything, I don't think. There's a little bit of stuff here, but just to give you an idea, there are several different application methods. One is that you spray it like that, and then you kind of put the powders there, and you can kind of see how the powders just reach out and, and spread, and you can kind of increase that or encourage it. Um, if you'd like more water in the part that's still mostly powder, you can do that. You can get drips and all kinds of traveling um, throughout. So you can get just about any effect that you want. And if you're trying to do a mixed media background behind a photo, this is is a, a great idea. It's, as you can see, it's, it's fast. <laughs> and you can blot and, and kind of reduce the intensity of the color. Um, you can, you can kind of brush like this. You can do this with paper towel or baby wipe, and you can kind of get something that looks like um, brush strokes in, in paint. And if you have a wet, um, you know, a baby wipe, you can, you can do some things maybe with, um, with a stencil. I think it may be beyond doing that. But if I had a baby wipe 
handy, and I guess I probably do back in there. There are a million things that you can do playing around with this, and it makes a great background for a, for a photo on a, on a layout. Okay, so let me do first, I think I said I was going to do the, I'm just going to color some modeling paste. Let me make sure all of this is on camera. I've got nearly out of modeling paste. I'm not going to color up a lot because I really want to take a lot of time on camera. When you open, open the Vicki Booten powders, there is a little sprinkler. I think I'd pay really good money to have this sprinkler insert inside my brushos. And if anybody is... Um, it, brush shows have been around for a while, so I'm sure some smart person has uh, made those and, and markets them. But let me sprinkle. It's not sprinkling too well, is it? Um, okay, I've got a little bit of sprinkle, but it's not. Uh, this is kind of a disc discovery process. You and I are discovering this together. I'm having a little trouble getting this. Maybe I wouldn't pay good money for this because it doesn't seem to be working as I would want it to. When you open the, uh, the jar, there's a little um, plastic insert that keeps that from, uh, keeps the powder from puffing up into your face as you as you open the jar. And you have to peel that off in order for the sprinkling to work. And apparently, the colors are a little bit compressed in there. And you have to mess them up. Okay, so there's the poofing that I was talking about. Okay, it's good that I have all kinds of covers on my... Uh, on my table. So a little bit came out there. That's probably enough to get the color intensity that I want. I also like that with Color Burst, you have the label that shows you what color. And with the Vicki Booten, uh, the, the pots are clear. This is sugared strawberry. And so you can tell what color you're working with. Brushos are all just black and white. And, ah, okay. So what we've got here is the color intensity isn't great, but it did definitely color it a little pink. And I may just kind of go here. And because, as I showed you, I had done some, um, see what I mean about patience with, with doing this. I had done, I lifted up some of the colors, the brush -o colors, with the tip of this knife. Well, I didn't wash those colors off and there was a blue on there. So it's kind of made this pink a uh, more uh, orchid or purplish type color. So what I'm doing here is just kind of, when I do stencils, I, I, I'm not actually trying to paint a picture that's perfect. Um, but in here, I probably should have st uh, chosen something that was a more uh, geometric or repeating pattern as opposed to one with a picture in it. Um, but you can, you can kind of do that and you get some texture with that texture paste as you would, as you would expect. And then you've got You've got that. And so that, that's just kind of using it as a coloring agent. And I'm sure as I um, get more experience with the Vicki Booten colors, I'll find other uses for them. But for now, I think that's probably how I would use them first. And I've just done that. Let me clean the stencil. And I'm going to clean this off. Normally, I would use this on an art journal page or someplace else 
that um, where it wouldn't go to waste, but for purposes of this, I'd really like a clean mat to work on. And this is the quickest way to do that. And also, you clean off the, the um, palette knife, which I didn't do well enough or at all while ago. Okay. So, uh, one thing that you will notice when you use any of these products is every color that you use is kind of a blend of the pigments that make up that color. And so you don't have a, um, it, it's not just one color. When you use fuchsia, you're gonna get blues and pinks and reds and maybe even yellows and greens that kind of show up and, and highlight as the water hits them. So that's kind of fascinating. Okay, on um, the next thing I'm going to do with this stencil, I'm going to lay it here, and I'm going to use um, Color Burst. First, I'll sprinkle the Color Burst, this yellow, over the flower centers. And... I'm doing this dry. I may turn this page over and try this wet just to see uh, how differently it behaves. And I've used color bursts differently. This is a sap green, which seems like it might be good for these leaves. It kind of comes out a little bit differently and this is going to be as perfectly imperfect as you would imagine if you're just sprinkling powders and then spritzing water. So you're not going for picture perfect um, representation of these flowers here. So I may do a marigold color and a peony color for the flowers. I'll I'll kind of go like this, and, and that'll probably blend with the yellow in the flower centers, and that's okay, uh, particularly in the marigold case, it's just going to kind of look a different orange. Okay, so I've done three peony colors. I'll go with the marigold, which is a really beautiful, um, bright, dark sort of orange. What might be kind of cool is to mix those. I'm just kind of dropping a little bit into each flower. And I had mentioned maybe doing a blue background. I'm not going to do that. I may go back in and fill in some of that with a light blue, a pale blue uh, Vicky Booten crayon. Uh, to, if I want, if I don't want white showing. So here goes. Are we ready for the shock and awe? Let's spray this and you can see how it's coloring. This is really beautiful, I think. And I'm going to, there, I, I don't always blot with paper towel but I can't show you what has happened uh, unless I do here because it's just too wet and take too long to dry uh, naturally. Okay, so let's do the reveal here. And you can kind of see uh, another thing that would be nice is to use some of that color that's still on the stencil and see if we can pick it up. It made an interesting uh, background, nothing to write home about, but I bet if I spritz it with some water, it gets more interesting. It does, and I may have some use for that someday, but at the moment it's not 
uh, it's not calling my name. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside. I love this. As you can see, some green and uh, orange have mixed, making some, some mud. So that's an idea that, um, and, and my, that's gonna happen, let me put it that way. Um, uh, up in here, look how distinct those yellow centers are. When you get down here, I must have lifted it this way and the water kind of fell, or I concentrated a little too much water there. So whatever I did up here is what I would wanna do all over. So I may have to be a little bit more careful with my spritzer. And there's a, I think Ken Oliver makes a, uh, a sprayer, and then I have this distress sprayer that's a very, very fine mist. So this is possibly what I should have been using. So let me put that one away, and let me change that idea. Again, lessons learned together here. Okay, this next uh, color burst I'm gonna do on the bubble wrap. I will do, um, I'm gonna use my paper kind of mostly covers this part, so I may actually cut this one off so that I can use that a little bit later. This is the only large bubble wrap I happened to have in the house. I kind of ripped through my bubble wrap supply about a month or so ago. Okay, let's do this. First, what I'm going to do here with the brushos, I'm going to kind of go yellow, scarlet, ultramarine. Well, actually, I'm going to do scarlet, yellow, turquoise, ultramarine. We'll kind of do it in a somewhat rainbow order for these four colors. And I'm going to wet the bubble wrap ahead of time. And I will not wet the paper. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. Let me see if I can just sprinkle it from the bottle. I get some yellow, and what I'm gonna do, I can see there, I, I got the, the red here, and then there's a little bit here, but I'm gonna start my yellow back over there, kind of mixed with the red, so that I'll, I should get a little bit of an orange somewhere in there. And my turquoise may or may not blend with that yellow to do a, a little bit of a greenish color. And then we'll go with the ultramarine. And you can kind of see that the, the uh, granules, particularly in this turquoise, I'm gonna see if I can get that close up for you. Those granules are not all one color. They're, they're not uniform. Now in ultramarine, they do look uniform, but some of them are purple, some are black, some are, are um, a true blue. And we'll see what, what comes out. I may put a little bit of the ultramarine over here. There's not a color here that the ultramarine wouldn't look good next to, so let me do that. Okay, and I do not see the amount of wetness that I think I'd like. I'm going to actually, from far away, mist some more. So let's go with this guy. I'm gonna kind of press it down and Okay, so it's rather distinctive dots, and you can kind of see the color progression there. Let me do a second pressing over top of that um, kind of experimental piece I did a while ago. And I'm gonna press down a little bit more and kind of moosh it a bit, and we'll see if we, ooh, that's kind of cool. That's, that's nice. I do like that. Let me try something else here. 
I'm gonna try using this stencil again. Put the stencil on top and see if I can get the stencil image when I press down on there. Um, a little bit of the, the leaf pattern there. Nothing to write home about. Uh, again, nothing particularly exciting there. Let's see if I can get some of the color. Oh, that's kind of nice. That printing. This is kind of offset printing or off. Um, it's, it's similar to what you might do if you've worked with a jelly plate. So I'm just going to kind of continue pressing this around where I see ink. I'm actually just kind of cleaning the stencil right now. So where I see ink, I'll lay it down. And that gives you, it, you, could, you could intentionally uh, have the, the uh, leaves touching different colors. So like I could go back and say, um, I'd like some, a blue leaf print. So you could go get that and press that down. And you could do an abstract tropical uh, print. You could actually, this would be a nice patterned paper that you could, okay, I'm actually really liking this. Um, and you may see this on one of my layouts. Okay, so that, I, I kind of like that. I'm gonna end the video here None of these um, is a finished project, but I will do a finished project and, um, and, and publish it when I uh, publish a link to the video. So I've got a day to get that done. Um, happy Thursday. Well, actually, it's Friday when you see this. Uh, this is a mixed media frenzy that I'm doing on Thursday. I have some, um, some hand cleaning to do and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.